global controls will have to be imposed, and a world governing body will be created to enforce them. Crises precipitate change. <laughs> Secretly plotting your demise. I want to devise a bi- Hello everyone, welcome back to part two of nanotechnology being sold to the sheeple. There is another article that uh, is a recent article right around the same time as this nanotech robots deliver gene therapy through blood story was published. So, But I wanted to get to those other companies. And these are the, these are the companies that are making these nanoparticles that I believe, it's my my little theory is that these particles are being sprayed in the chemtrails that everybody keeps talking about. It's part of weather modification, and there's two areas of this um, study or studying or research program that they have going here as far as the Department of Energy, you know, the government. And it is the U.S. Department of Energy, and it's called ARM, and it's uh, the atmospheric uh, uh, radiation. That's what they're talking about. It's with the radiation part. And it's a climate research facility. And so there's two parts. There's the atmospheric uh, science program, which, which does more of the weather modification with aerosols and that. And then the second part is, is the arm, which is the radiation part. And if you listen to one of the shows we covered last week on the cutting edge, the radio show that I've been a part of lately, uh, recently and started, I'm a co-host then, I was basically covering all all different aspects of weather modification but then i got into the uh, owning the weather by 2025 uh you know the weather multi uh, weather force multiplier uh, it was a white paper that was presented to the to a general of the air force and in it describes specifically about spraying nanoparticles in order into the upper atmosphere by the ionosphere to create an artificial ionosphere that can be used to jam radar to um, to actually shoot uh, incoming missiles out of the sky but there's other things that it can be used for it can cause blackouts they were talking about creating lightning I mean just all kinds of mind control type stuff and that goes into the into the into the exotic weapons bill that Kucinich was uh, referring to in the bill that he sponsored because you know earthquakes they can create I mean, it's just all kinds of crazy stuff that's going on here and uh, nanoparticles seem to be at the center of it so without further ado let's go to these companies down here and this is Pacific Northwest let's see what they're doing Pacific Northwest National Laboratory scientists in this division lead and contribute to programs within the uh, DOE um, Department of Homeland Security, oddly enough, the uh, EPA, the National Aeronautics and Space Administration, or otherwise known as NASA. So you have Homeland Security, NASA, involved with this uh, laboratory, and it says major programs supported by this division include the DOE Atmospheric Radiation Measurement Program, that's ARM. And this is uh, mostly going to be used for military purposes, guys, so that's what I'm getting at. And when you go into some of the research, the main one that sticks out is what is climate change science. That's referring to geoengineering, which the director of science and technology, J.P. Holdren, is calling for. And this com- next company, Argon National Laboratory out of Chicago, uh, they perform measurements ranging from routine surface observations of wind speed and direction, temperature, humidity, and it says remote sensing of aerosol distributions in the atmospheric boundary layer. So. And then here you go, you have the uh, nano fabrication and devices uh, page on their website. And the next laboratory that's associated with the atmospheric science program and ARM, the climate research facility, these are the people that are modifying the weather and spraying nanoparticles into the uh, atmosphere. These are the companies that are producing this technology for them and supplying with it. And um, this is Brookhaven National Laboratory. And of course, um, hopefully one day we'll be able to, you know, prove this uh, beyond a shadow of a doubt. But right now, this is just the research that I've come up with in studying weather modification and the government's own websites and documents. 
and uh, basically Brookhaven is a center for functional nanomaterials that provides state-of-the-art capabilities for fabrication and study of nanoscale materials. Partners along with eight other national laboratories, which are all the other laboratories that are on the, on the first page on the ARMS website. So they're all partnered together and all receiving money from the government to do this. And it's uh, for the Homeland Security and uh, ARM and ASR, which are both those programs I was talking about. The next one would be um, Los and of course La Los Alamos National Laboratory is located in New Mexico. They got the nice little uh, Aya Horus here. And um, I noticed that a lot of these uh, laboratories that are all in partnership with this program, you know, uh, you had the Pacific Northwest National Laboratory, um, which is obviously in the Pacific Northwest. Then you have Argonne, which is out of Chicago, Brookhaven, which is in New York, then Los Alamos, which is in New Mexico. And so these are all kind of nicely spread out and spread apart throughout the country. But Los Alamos is big time into nanoparticles and nanorobots to be specific. It says on technology, the ability to self-replicate, metabolize, and evolve into new forms is considered that defining characteristic of living cells. But Los Alamos is creating tiny machines that possess these abilities. And that's straight from their website. So... And the spooky thing about these uh, materials are that, you know, they could self-replicate. They could procreate. They can match themselves and grow in numbers. Let's say if they were in your body, right, if these were these Morgellon fibers that, you know, in these pictures have been pulled out of people, then, and they can metabolize. In other words, they can use your body as an energy source and evolve into new forms. I mean, that's straight from Las Alamos's, uh website so that's the information I'm getting it from is from the people that that design and, and produce these things in mass just quickly to show you there's Berkeley lab and they're into this uh, nanotechnology uh, as well and lastly you have Oak Ridge National Laboratory much like every other uh, website you'll go on to with all these national laboratories it'll say managed by UT Battelle for the University of Tennessee that's where they're based out of for the Department of Energy. So they're all working for the Department of Energy. And that's where they get their uh, funding from. And of course, it says Chu announces contract extension. So they keep getting more and more funds. But this is interesting because this is the this is the money maker right here. It says the Nano Application Center at Oak Ridge National Laboratory employs state of the art facilities and multidisciplinary research and develop cap uh, capabilities to transition the discoveries of nanoscience to innovative technologies for energy, environment, and economic competitiveness. So, whatever, right? says, we foster innovation of new energy-related nanotechnologies and help transform industry by, here we go, by enabling the responsible development of process for mass production and application of nanoscale materials, structures, and devices. So, and that, the source for that was the Atmospheric Science Program's website. So, the, um, the counterpart to ARM, but they've now been uh, just brought into one program, ARM and uh, the ASP. And if this doesn't mean anything to you guys yet, let me just uh, cover this last article. This is from the Pacific Northwest National Laboratory, one of the biggest contributors to the uh, to this weather modification that uh, program. Um, basically, they had a the chief scientist for this for them addressed the Congress on geoengineering, which is what I was talking about, which is they want to shoot particles in the sky in order to reflect sunlight back into space. But it has nothing to do with that. It's about it's really about creating an artificial ionosphere for military purposes, but they cannot legally do that because of the UN charter that bans them from doing that. So they have to do this uh, uh, going the civilian route. It says Dr. Phil Rash joins other panelists discussing the potential benefits benefits, risk, cost of geoengineering. And, of course, he says he discussed radiative forcing use of stratos stratospheric sulfate aerosol or maritime cloud whitening. And um, says the idea behind solar radiation management is finding a way to make the planet a little more reflective to sunlight and then uh, less would be absorbed by the Earth and the planet would be slightly cooler than it would be otherwise. And, guys, we're in a global cooling period, or we're not even that. We're just in the, the planet's been cooling down. So this whole global warming is a bunch of shit. So I don't buy any of this when they talk about this. This is for military purposes. This is what they're doing. They're shooting these nanoparticles up into the sky and creating an artificial ionosphere. That's what I wanted to stress. So, 
And so yeah, you have uh, stories like this, you know, where they're talking about nano foods coming to a store near you. And it scares me because they're selling this to the public and researchers are pulling these things, these fibers out of people. Thank you for checking this out.